So welcome back everybody. My name is Andrew and this little guy here is Ruger. So as you've seen in the thumbnail, I'm about to attempt to build a fold open style uh, dog house. I found or seen a picture on Pinterest. I'm gonna build something a little different, but I like the idea of a floor that stays still, a top that folds open, so I can put and take in and out his big dog crate bed if I need to wash or clean that up, if he has any accidents in there. One of the worst things I feel like you can do with a dog house is build it to where it's set up just for the dog and the human can never get in there to clean out dirt dauber nest, wasp nest, spider webs, clean out, um, like I said, any accidents. I want one that'll fold right open, give me easy access. And I don't think it's gonna be that much more complicated to build and only a few more dollars for the hinges. So I'm setting up tools right now. Let's go grab all the materials that I picked up and let's build this thing. All right, so I'm gonna do my best to use materials that I already have on hand. I only picked up one sheet of plywood the other day. I had one left over, got some scrap two by fours. So we're gonna make it work, especially with as expensive as plywood is right now. So I just grabbed some quick dimensions off of a large breed dog crate that I have. It happens to be 32 inches tall, 48 inches deep, and it's about 29 inches wide to 30. I'm gonna go ahead and bump that out to 32. So a sheet of plywood is 96 inches long. Actually, this one's slightly over, which is great. That'll make up for all the cuts that we're about to do. So what I'm gonna do is make a mark at 32, 64, and then I'm done. That'll leave me three 32 inch pieces out of this sheet of three quarter inch ply right here. One is gonna be the bottom, then I'm gonna have two 32 inch sidewalls that are 48 inches deep. We're just gonna go ahead and stick with that, even though that's probably bigger than I need but this should last long enough for whenever my lab gets 60, 70 pounds, this should be plenty comfortable enough to curl up in. And then this sheet of half inch that I have on the back side, we'll just make our front and back walls with our peaks and our door opening out of that. So let me get these pieces cut. We're gonna try to do this to save as much wood and as much money as possible. So 32 inches gets us three perfect size pieces out of this to get started. So this should be interesting too. This is my puppy's first exposure to a little bit louder noise, like a saw. I'm curious to see how he handles it. Whenever I just come up here with a tractor and other things, surprisingly, not a problem. He was very curious about that. But now he's distracted by a bug. I think we're good to go. All right, so one thing I'm gonna do here, you can see I just cut a four by four and a half, an eight footer, again, makes this project really straightforward and simple. And I am leaving the four by four sticking out on either side by one half of an inch. So essentially what's gonna happen, those other two 32 inch pieces that we just cut for our sidewalls, well, they're gonna be attached to the back that's attached to hinges and everything is gonna lift up. But whenever it comes down, I need those sides to actually rest on something and it might as well be a full length of a four by four. Now the sidewalls, the whole doghouse gets full support. It'll make it really strong like that. The reason I'm only leaving the four by four sticking out a half inch right here is because I'm using three quarter inch plywood for my sidewalls and I want them to barely hang over the four by four. So when water hits this, it'll shed off, come down the side of the four by fours and go to the ground. Because even though this stuff is pressure treated, and let me go ahead and forewarn you or, or let you know, people are gonna ask, this is not the good old school arsenic pressure treated stuff. So there's really have no concern here for my animals that he would have to chew and eat up this entire thing. And I think the wood would be more of a problem than the treatment that's in this. Bugs eat this stuff up now. Not the same type of treatment that you're, you're thinking. But with that said, because this stuff is nowhere near as good as the old school lumber that we're all used to, if water runs down and I don't have it to where it sheds off on the side of the four by fours, but can puddle up on top, it'll come underneath and eventually rot this out. So I wanna make for sure my sidewalls stick out just past, about a quarter inch past these four by fours. I think that's gonna be a critical uh, step to make sure that this lasts longer and I don't rot the bottom out or 
the four by fours themselves. The other thing to do, a lot of this new lumber, especially the two by stuff, you see it's so light now. It's not dark green like the old good treated lumber. This stuff salt cured a lot of it. Uh, so you better get some deck screws that are coated. You see these are green. These are made it's exterior screws or what they call a deck screw. You'll see it brown sometimes, but make sure the box says rated for pressure treated lumber. That's uh, very important nowadays because it will rust your fastener right out. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach this and make our base. Yep, somebody's awake now wondering what on earth that was. All right, I'm gonna finish shooting all these screws in and then we'll start building us a skeleton frame that we'll then sheathe to. And I'm gonna use that frame to tie all these pieces together, make sure everything's really nice and sturdy and strong when we're actually lifting it up. Okay, so my skeleton is going to consist of some two by fours that I have. Actually, I may rip them in half and make some kind of like inch and three quarter boards. We don't really need big beefy two by fours for this, but they're going to be the same exact width as this top piece, not including the four by fours because the frame is essentially going to sit on top everywhere and tie in. It's going to come up and actually make our skeleton frame shape that we'll put that sheathing to. Uh, it'll make more sense whenever I cut these pieces out, start putting it together. So bear with me. Let me get this measured out and get to cutting. Okay, so before we get too far along, let me show you what I did here. So as you can see, I boxed out every single joining corner. That way I could shoot screws into solid wood instead of trying to screw two pieces of plywood together, which is just not gonna be very strong, but it is possible. You can skip the boxing out the corner step. But don't forget, this is gonna be tilted up in the air and can move around. This is gonna make it a lot stronger, taking the time to do that. And you could just buy two by twos from the store. My store was actually out of them the other day, and it's even cheaper to just to rip down two by fours, which I already had. So by boxing all that out, including the top edges, what that also does is as this plywood dries, it wants to warp. So having a stringer in the bottom and a stringer up top, it should always keep my walls nice and straight, and I can also add vertical supports. Now, one thing absolutely worth mentioning, if you're up north, Boxing out also would allow you to see the gap that it gives right there an inch and a half. You could do up to one and a half inches of foam board right in there for insulation. You get some spray adhesive spray on the wall, spray on the back side of the board. You can cut it fit, put in there, and then you could put a thin piece of paneling over that. You wouldn't want to leave foam exposed because your dog's probably going to rip it out. But you can make a double walled one of these very easy uh, and quite affordably. Now that's of no concern to me being in Florida. The few little cold days that we get in the winter, I'll probably put extra blankets and a heat lamp in here. A heat lamp alone will make this thing toasty. But if you're up north where it gets very cold, I would go ahead, frame the corners out like this, 
do that installation of the walls and uh, close it up for not much more money and you would have a very sturdy and very well insulated dog house. You could even put that folding board underneath, but keep in mind mice and everything else are probably eventually gonna get to it. I had an old scrap two by six laying around. You can see I just flipped it up and put it dead center right there to kind of give me some pitch for my roof. Cut a couple of uh, two by fours down at a specific angle that they match together properly. I don't even remember what it is on the machine. This will be fine. We're gonna add some stringers up here uh, in just a minute out of some three quarter inch ply that I have. Since I don't have any one by fours, we're gonna rip it down to look the same. Then we'll do a tin roof. But because this is extremely hot Florida, what I'm more concerned about than anything is ventilation. I want airflow in here more than I wanna seal it out and insulate it. So by me leaving this big gap all the way around and then putting those wood stringers and raising the tent up even more, we're gonna wind up with a large gap here. So there's gonna be plenty of good airflow, which I want. So we don't wind up with mold, mildew, dampness in here. Uh, and we just wanna get that hot air out. Hot air rises, I want the roof completely vented. Okay, so what I'm gonna do over here, I've already got my front trimmed out. This is the last piece of plywood that we're gonna put on. And I just measured me out 11 by 19 doggy door right here in the middle. Well, an opening, there's gonna be no door here at all. And I just pulled that number offline uh, for a Labrador full size lab, 11 by 19, they said was a plenty good enough opening. It does look a little awkward to the eye, but I looked on multiple websites that sell doggy doors and that was the most common recommended size. Some of them recommended even a little smaller. So the beautiful thing about this is being wood, if my dog grows up just to be gigantic and doesn't fit comfortably here in the future, well, I can come out here with a jigsaw, trim this opening just a little bit larger. It's not the end of the world. All right, so now it's time for a good coat of paint. Not only will this make this look good, it'll seal it. A lot of people have misconception and believe that because you're using pressure treated wood, it's just ready to go. Well, paint will greatly extend the life of that wood by sealing all the grain, especially the cut ends and edges, and everything else in. You can see I've already went in with a brush and got all the areas I can't get with a roller. And I caught every single screw hole that's not gonna get trim over it, every big knot, like some of these, and big cracks and gaps. I don't want water to get in there and settle. Paint does a really good job of sealing that out, but it can't seal those huge gaps. The other awesome thing that this paint does, I bought a, this is a nice Sherwin-Williams paint that has a mold and mildew blocker in it as well. I tend to believe it because I've had my porch painted for quite a while now. We went through a lot of nasty thunderstorms and rain. And before I painted it, I was constantly getting mildew up there on that wood. Now that it's painted, I've seen none, none at all. So I'm painting this the same color as the house. Why not? Have the paint and it'll look good out there sitting behind the house. You're being so chill, dude. That loud saw don't even bother you, does it? 
Man, you being so cheap. All right, so we're gonna cut a little tin. I started trying to cut with my tin snips. I'm not getting a straight cut at all. Just a little too aggravating. So this little device right here, if you've never seen it, it goes right on the end of an impact or drill, but I find that it fits really good on my Dewalt impact. And this is a metal shear. So it's got a head on it that can rotate. If you take it out of the chuck, you can rotate this head whatever way you wanna cut, but check this out. Now this thing, this thing can cut fast now, almost too fast, it can get away from you. But uh, for long rips on metal or cutting across any kind of steel like sheeting like this, that is so hard to beat for the convenience. Doesn't give you the most accurate cuts, but neither are my 10 snips right now. Can be a little tough to get up and over the ridge with this without it walking off on you. But it is possible. I'm using a bunch of leftover tin from a tornado damaged barn that we had two years ago. That's why you already see holes all in this stuff. This is a good project to use scrap stuff on. It. So here it is, the finished product. I just got another touch-up coat of paint on it, but let's look this over real quick. So I went ahead and wrapped all the sides with white trim to match the house. I think it turned out pretty good, especially for this kind of being a little bit of a budget build here. Like I said, this is recycled tin from a building that got completely destroyed in the tornado. That's why some of the screw spacing and things are a little off, but hey, this is a perfect project to reuse some of that scrap. So as you can see, I left everything vented. No point in closing up the ridge cap. If you come and look under the sides, we got big inch and a half gaps out there. What I'm probably gonna do, even though this puppy is a long ways away from even being able to get up here and touch it, I'll take my cutoff wheel, cut the screws all flush with the board, just in case somehow a paw ever got up underneath here. So I went to Lowe's and bought some heavy duty hinges. They're screwed into, keep in mind there is a piece that goes across inside some of that one by three quarter blocking that we made. The screws are going into that as well as the post that comes up the sidewall for strength. And I drove some uh, three inch deck screws all the way into the four by four down there. I did put a latch on the side in case we ever get severe winds and this, I don't know, maybe tries to blow open because what I'm thinking about doing is potentially anchoring the bottom and then the top would be loose at that point. Since we are in Florida, we do get tropical storms and hurricanes. If I put some earth augers in the ground, one front, one re rear, anchor it to the bottom and have that latch on there, this can never blow open in an extreme storm. The front, I'm not the world's happiest with, with the square opening. I really want to trim it out with some uh, PVC outside corner that would fit all the way around it. Some white looking PVC, I think that'd look sharp. 
But the reason I'm avoiding doing that right now, that little puppy over there that's asleep, well, he's in that chewing stage. And I'm afraid if I were to put some white trim right there, it would be pulled off in no time and chewed up. So once uh, he gets a little older, I think I am gonna trim the door out in white to make it look good. I could use wood, but I think that'd be a bit gaudy or bulky to uh, use pieces that large there. So this PVC trim will be perfect. Okay, so let's open this up and show you the main reason I built it the way that I did. It's inevitable that the little guy over there is gonna have an accident in here, gonna be sick, something's gonna happen, or I just wanna get in here occasionally, sweep, clean it out, get the bed out easier. Lots of different reasons I want access to this doghouse, and I'm not climbing through that door out right there. Way too fat for that. So all we have to do is just unlock that latch, grab a hold of the doggy door, Lift up. Ooh, that thing is heavy. But now look, there's this doggy bed. By the way, a 42 inch crate bed fits perfect in here. That's the size recommended for a lab. So now I can take this right out, see if it had any pee or poop on it. I don't have to try to drag it through the door, fling any off. Sweep this right off, hose it off. You're okay doing that, it's pressure treated material can put this right back. And now I can also get up in here very easy if uh, I need to access anything for any reason. Like I said, dirt dauber nest, get up in there, spider webs, things like that are, are gonna happen. And I can get in here really easy now, clean all of this out. So to pull it back over is even easier. Just gotta put your weight into it and it's ready to set down. And just like that, it's ready to go. Now, one thing I would suggest, again, you can insulate this if you'll go ahead and box it all out like I did. Also, I was thinking about doing this and completely got sidetracked. I should have 45 the front and back of those four by fours. So basically cut an angle right here, and then you essentially make a skid. So if you need to drag this around, it's gonna drag a whole lot easier with an angle on the front and rear of those four by fours. Although you can't do too much of an angle back there because well, you have your hinges screwed into them. But that would make it easier to drag around if you want this movable. What I'm gonna do, because I have the convenience of a tractor with tractor forks, I scoop right up underneath this and move it anytime I need to, because this is very, very heavy. Okay, so my final thoughts, I think it was a fun little project. This is an extremely robust and overbuilt doghouse. Nothing should be to tear out of this. It shouldn't have any issues blowing over in the wind, like I said, unless it's hurricanes. Uh, and I was happy that I was able to use a lot of scrap stuff that I had around here to try to keep it affordable. What inspired me to go ahead and build this was one, I wanted access to something easy to clean out, and two, I got to pricing plastic dog houses on Amazon, and they were well over $100 for extremely basic, cheap, and not well vented, just like uh, Tupperware container dog houses. You could tell the sun would probably warp them. They're snapped together. They don't look well built at all, and I, I probably have just as much money in this. I mean, a couple sheets of plywood, 100 bucks. I had the 10. Before you know it, you could probably have 200 in this. Um, I don't have anywhere near that, but the point being, you'd be much better off uh, to build something like this and spend you know, an extra $50 than buying those cheap plastic things that I'm seeing online. So lastly, don't forget, sides are 32 inches high. That way we could get three 32 inch pieces out of a 96 inch long piece of plywood. So that got us the bottom, which is 32 inches wide by 48 long. All of this is two 32 inch sides and the front, well, they start at 32 here and I just went with a made up angle. Actually, it was right under 17 degrees, if I remember correctly, is the uh, pitch that I did here, which Kind of looks very close to the four to 12 pitch that I have up there. That sounds about right. And then they used one eight foot four by four in the bottom cut in half. So that kept everything, all that eight foot stuff, very nice and simple and straightforward. All right, well, thank y'all so much for watching. Hopefully little Ruger over there enjoys this. We have him a crate around the corner. He's only been with us for a few days and believe it or not, he is already crate trained. No peeing, no pooping. He's enjoying sleeping in it. Seems happy and well rested when he wakes up. So I'm curious if he's even gonna wanna use this doghouse. Another thing I can foresee happening with this in the future, I may wind up building another one because it matches 
uh, the decor of the house so much. And I may put casters right on the bottom so I can roll this around. I can foresee this being popular for me just to leave up here on the porch. So we've got to figure out where we're going to keep our new little dog. Um, if he wants to live full time on the porch, we're perfectly fine with that. He doesn't have to live in the kennel. That's just a place for us to put him uh, when we, we can't keep an eye on him. That's where this is going right now. If he winds up really liking this and the porch seems to be like his happy home, I think a locking set of casters would be awesome on this. And we can move it anywhere on this big porch that we want to. All right, thank you all so much for watching. Tons of other DIY projects coming on the channel. Catch you on the next one.